I think Los Angeles is mysterious to a lot of people who don't live here and can sometimes be mysterious to its own residents. LA is, it's hard, it's hard to pin down. It's a place that's hard to pin down. And I think that's what I try to do in my writing is just to show the different kinds of Los Angeles that there are. A review of your 2012 book, Elsewhere California, describes it as, and I will quote, essential reading for Angelinos, Californians, and anyone interested in morally engaging storytelling. So my first question is, what makes your work and your books essential reading for Angelinos? That's high praise, and I'm hope I'm, <laughs> I'm earning that praise, but I would just hope to you know, reveal something about place that perhaps readers hadn't seen before, hadn't considered. Having lived downtown since 2005, in the Not Quite Dark, the short story collection, I was suddenly living downtown and I was seeing all kinds of, you know, income disparity, the homelessness problem, uh, so many things that I thought, again, not that I was going to be telling the quote unquote truth about, but that there was something about living in that moment and that time and seeing what I was seeing that was important to document. Let's talk about you and your journey as a writer. What made you decide to become a writer? I think like most writers, I loved to read so much when I was a kid. I was a voracious reader. That's all I did. Um, and at some point, there are people who love reading and books, and then there are people who love reading and books and want to try and do the thing that they're encountering when they engage with a book. And so that's, that was me. I really wanted to see if I could do it. And so I first started writing poems and then I started trying to write short stories. And um, that's sort of how I started writing. And then seriously writing, um, I took classes at UCLA. From there, I went to graduate school at Indiana University. I never knew anyone who was a writer growing up. I never ran into writers. So having access to getting um, a degree in creative writing, that was the thing that really uh, made me a writer. My thesis at Indiana University was my collection of short stories that was eventually published because the collection Break Any Woman Down won the Flannery O'Connor Award for Short Fiction. And that was a huge break, very lucky. And from that I got an agent. So the award, it was a huge thing, life-changing for me because out of that award came my first short story collection. I really wanted to tell the kind of stories that I felt were missing in books that I was reading when I was growing up. I wish that there were books that, you know, about a little girl growing up in West Covina. I didn't have that. It was all like Hollywood. I never really saw my experience in the literature of Los Angeles. Let's talk about your writing technique. You know, I read somewhere that you actually write in longhand. I do. How does that help you with your creative process? It's so funny because sometimes if you say you write in longhand, it's sort of like people give you the eye roll like because it sounds so precious. Like, oh, you're writing longhand. How fancy, but, uh, or pretentious. Um, but for me, there is a, an editing process that works for me when I'm writing longhand because there's the moment from brain to hand to page, but I'm also editing as I'm writing down those initial sentences I'm editing at that point. And then once I'm typing in my work, I'm editing it again as I type it. And so it's just a natural way for me to in some ways, sneak in extra drafts, even though they're technically first drafts. Um, it's a way for me to sort of process what I'm writing and thinking about it as I go along. Sometimes there are certain deadlines where I have to just get on that computer and just do it that way. I'm wondering about how you do your research. How much of it is actually your own personal experience and how much of it is observation of what happens to other individuals? It's always a combination of the two. Um, 
for example, um, I mean, Elsewhere California is about, uh, it's a dual narrative about a young girl who moves from 80th in Vermont to West Covina, which is what I did when I was around nine or 10, but it's not autobiography, it's fiction. What I was most interested in was what that move meant for assimilation, what that move meant for understanding place in California, Los Angeles, the suburbs of Los Angeles. But there are other stories, say, for example, in the short story collection, the last story in the collection is a story called The Story of Biddy Mason, um, who was, uh, she erected the first AME church here in Los Angeles, entrepreneur, nurse, and I had never heard of her growing up. And so when I discovered her story, I wanted to write about it, but that required a ton of research. Um, that was something that I really needed to research. So sometimes stories require that kind of research, and sometimes I'm really after sort of the emotional truth of perhaps something that actually happened, which then, though, has to be fictionalized. So I'm not ever writing what happened. Right. So a combination of research and combination of just sort of living life. Dana, do you believe that there's anything very unique about being a creative person, a writer, here in Los Angeles? I do find that the landscape um, really calls to me. There's something about Los Angeles weather, something about the light, something about driving and being surrounded by mountains. Um, all of that, I found myself when I was in grad school in Indiana, writing about Los Angeles in ways that I hadn't before because I was suddenly away. And so I was understanding what I really appreciated about the place that I had sort of taken for granted um, while I was writing here at home. And so once I had that revelation, always some kind of way, something about uh, the physical Los Angeles, um, the weather of it, the landscape of it. Um, if I'm writing about uh, Los Angeles or something set in Los Angeles or California, it's always going to have some of that in, this, in the work. A hundred years from now, when someone reads your books, what do you hope that they will come away with? I hope that they read my books and think, Wow, I thought I knew Los Angeles and I didn't know it as well as I thought I did. You know, since the publication of your first books, the landscape in many ways has changed in Los Angeles. Mm. So how has that impacted your work? And then what's next for you? So yes, it's 2019 and I moved downtown in 2005 and that was my last book that I'd written in the Not Quite Dark, the short story collection stories that are mostly set downtown. And since that book was published and since living downtown all those years, it's changed completely. Many things that I write about aren't even there anymore. Just very different place. Um, and so, um, you know, I'm still always going to be writing about Los Angeles likely in some capacity. But the project that I'm working on now is a novel, and it's set in both uh, Los Angeles and the American South. And so it's sort of um, uh, an examination of the United States and sort of the pre-Trump era. Well, it sounds fascinating. And thank you so much for giving us a closer look at your creative process and how you do your work. Traffic is slowing down and we're almost to the stadium. It only takes about 45 minutes from home and then you're eating a Dodger dog and peanuts. You can always tell when you're almost there because of the old wooden houses with their paint peeling off on the right side of the freeway. White houses with blue paint underneath. Bars on all the windows. I like those old houses because they don't seem to fit where they are. 